So good afternoon, everybody. It's great to have you here. Welcome to the Finos virtual meetup with myself, James McLeod, Finos Director of Community, and Mel, um, otherwise known as Maurizio Pelitu, uh, Finos Director of Infrastructure. And we're here today um, to talk through exploring the Finos maintainers cheat sheet. Um, but before I, I actually go into um, the cheat sheet, um, I'd like to ask everybody if you've got any questions about our content this afternoon, please feel free to put them in the WebEx chat, um, as I was just um, uh, explaining, um, where both myself and Mal will answer um, all of your questions in a Q&A session after the main presentation. Um, and also, during the um, presentation this afternoon, we'll be doing a draw for two free Finos t-shirts to people who have registered um, for this um, presentation on the Finos.org website. So if you haven't registered, get a, along there now and register and your name will be put into the hat for the draw for, for one of two t-shirts. Um, and whilst you're over at Finos.org, um, please visit our Get Involved um, page uh, where you'll be able to learn more about us and then also register for newsletters and also um, updates for events and other things that we're doing within the foundation. Um, you can also find us on LinkedIn um, and you can also follow us on Twitter. Now, being an open source foundation, um, you can also visit um, github.com forward slash Finos, which is our organization. Um, where you can find um, our projects and also get involved um, as an engineer or a developer. Um, and so now, rather than passing over to somebody else, I'm actually going to be talking and taking everybody through exploring the Finos Maintainers Cheat Sheet. So um, on the 10th of September, uh, Finos had its all community call, um, which we do basically every quarter, um, we bring the Finos uh, community plus the open source community together to take people through everything that we've been achieving um, throughout the quarter of that year. Um, now, during that session, um, we had the Finos maintainers cheat sheet, which was added to it, but we didn't get the opportunity to go through it in as much detail as we would have liked to um, because of uh, the other content that was there. And so this afternoon, both myself and also Mal, who's on the call, um, will be taking you through the Finos Maintainers Cheat Sheet, um, which we've created in order to make the Finos Maintainers life a little bit easier. Um, so throughout the course of the next maybe 20 minutes, um, we'll be going through um, all five of these areas. The first being integrating continuous integration and deployment onto Finos project builds. The second is publishing documentation from GitHub repositories to Finos project websites. And then we're gonna go through running project meetings using um, including agendas and recording attendance and publishing minutes using GitHub. Um, and then we'll be talking about security and uh, responsible disclosure. And then, as a maintainer, how to grow maturity, viability, and, and the value of your project. But rather than go through it from this PowerPoint slide, um, where I would like to take you next um, is the link up here, which is the ABP microsite. So if I click on here, we go into a browser. And this is where today's session turns into something which is very much like uh, one of the uh, Finos project working group calls that we have. Um, where you are right now is on the Open Developer Platform um, microsite, and Open De Plat Developer Platform is actually one of the projects where, incidentally, um, we're running a session this afternoon, um, pretty much straight after this session. Now, within the top right um, of the microsite, you'll notice that there's um, a docs link. And within that docs link, we explain what ODP is. Um, so if you'd like to go um, and learn more about ODP, um, I'll drop that link in the chat. But down the left-hand side, um, under our getting started, we've actually added the Finos maintainers cheat sheet um, to the ODP website, which means that we've now broken outside of um, Google Slides 
and you can follow along with me if you choose to locally, um, which is awesome. And so something else that I would also like to um, let you know, because we are an open source foundation, and if you have any other questions outside of this meeting, um, feel free to open an issue on the ODP issues board, um, which I've also um, just opened for you where you can ask any questions about um, the content that I'm about to go through and also get involved with ODP. So the first uh, question as a maintainer that we're about to answer is integrating continuous integration and deployment into FinOS project builds. And uh, within the open developer platform, we like to make sure that not only are we there to help you integrate into ODP, um, but we also give you all of the integration instructions and lots of different um, tutorials at the same time. And so you'll notice that this is also broken into um, our development infrastructure, continuous integration, and um, continuous integration through various different um, technologies that you can use. So at the moment, we are um, advocating that um, continuous integration and deployment is actually done through GitHub Actions. Um, and this is also covered um, through uh, a platform that we've created or a project that we've created um, called um, the FinOS Project Blueprint. And the FinOS Project Blueprint is our starting point um, for all of the various different projects that we have um, within FinOS. It basically gives um, everybody a template of uh, a lot of the things that we're about to talk about this afternoon, um, including, you know, some placeholders for um, building and deploying um, a, a, a FinOS microsite for your project as well. So maybe Mel, if you would like to talk through a little bit more about you know, the way that we actually use actions and maybe give a couple of examples of the actions that we um, deploy and advocate, that would be awesome. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll try to be brief. Um... Uh, it could be a long conversation, but and actually you did a great introduction, right? Um, uh, first of all, I, I would like to remark uh, what what James mentioned before. We advocate uh, CI solutions as any other solution that is uh, involved in the pipelines that we're showing. Um, however, we are clearly open to work with the team uh, and uh, introduce new systems or provide uh, guidance on how to configure um, GitHub Actions or any other solution in, in different ways than, than the ones currently documented. Um, right now, uh, we are advocating GitHub Actions. Uh, uh, in the past, we worked uh, uh, a lot with Travis CI. And when we say we work with, it means that we have seen many projects adopting this CI, and therefore we follow this trend. Uh, it's a community-led, if you want, um, uh, trend that we follow, and we happen to use GitHub Actions also to develop our inter internal automation. So for meeting attendance, uh, we have created a GitHub Action. We have a GitHub Action that helps with deployment of websites uh, built in Docusaurus. And actually, it, it is involved with the deployment of the website that you that you see in odp.finos.org. Um, and so we actually uh, sip our own champagne, uh, how people say it. Some people say it. Um, and uh, the other thing that maybe will, is interesting to note is uh, in the CI aspect uh, of the built pipeline. Um, is that continuous integration uh, changes a lot depending on the platform and language being adopted. Uh, and so uh, we, um, we, we tend to provide documentation based on which language or platform is used. Uh, currently, we, we have built a really good experience documentation and infrastructure for Java uh, Node. And uh, let's say a second stage, C Sharp and Python. Uh, nevertheless, we have projects in Go, uh, Clojure, uh, which is also quite well supported. We we have quite some some logic, internal logic in Clojure. I like Clojure. Um, 
and uh, yeah so that's pretty much it um i know this is a a large topic so i would like to actually ask uh, participants of this call uh, to drop questions or even interest uh in the chat because that would really help us a lot understanding uh, you know where which direction we have to take and where we should look at thank you james back to you yeah absolutely and so thank you very much for that introduction now and um in the spirit of teamwork what i've actually done is um presented people with um so going back to the cheat sheet um we actually uh linked out to the odp documentation around continuous integration um, where Mao did explain a couple of examples of where we're, um, where we provide um, integration points um, and build points for a couple of um, areas within Finos. Um, and so I basically want to show you what um, these areas are. So Project Blueprint is kind of like the um, cookie cutter for all of the various open source projects that we have within Finos. And so you'll notice that um, up here, we've got a green button that says use this template, um, which means when we get new contributions, we use the project, project blueprint to create our new projects. And so whether you're looking at um, Glue or you know any of the other new contributions that have come into Finos, the projects would have been built using this template here, which gives us a lot of different um, assets to play with, um, including the first one, um, which is the Docusaurus GitHub action um, that Mao um, discussed. Now, Docusaurus, the, and we'll also cover that a little bit later, is um, the way that we link up all of our repositories um, documentation so all of the markdown files that are within your docs folder with our microsites. So all of this content within the open developer platform microsite is actually built using Docusaurus, which is a React.js framework. And in order for that to become continuous with all of our pull requests and all of the merges, we have a Docusaurus build um, action which fires and then creates the next version of the website, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, and that means that for every version of um, documentation and build we have within our projects, we get a new version of the, of the microsite, which is hosted and displayed using Docusaurus. Um, and then later on, we're gonna be talking about um, how we actually host our meetings and we actually use GitHub, um, GitHub um, issues um, for uh, putting all of our meetings together, driving our agendas and taking our minutes. Plus we use a meetings um, action um, for taking a look at um, which of our members have actually um, joined and which of our you know, project team members are actually in the um, project. And this helps us aggregate um, a lot of information that we use within the foundation um, to measure the success of our projects. And so CICD is something that we use a lot. If these aren't the only two things that we use, um, and so feel free to drop your um, questions in chat, you know, if you have any further questions about how we use CICD within Finos. But from the Finos maintainers um, cheat sheet, you can also find all of the documentation that Mao went through around con continuous integration, how to use it using Travis, how we're using it using GitHub Actions, et cetera. Um, and then all of the various different technologies that we've also been supporting as well um, using CI/CD. And so we hope that all of this, these all of this documentation will be very helpful for our um, maintainers. Now, this actually brings us into the next um, part of um, the cheat sheet, which is how we actually publish um, all of our project documentation from our repositories. Um, because as a lot of engineering teams have learned, um, if you can keep all of the information about your project close to your code, it makes you more efficient, you know, being an engineering team. So if you've got your, your project documentation across multiple sources, you know, it actually, um, creates a lot of context which in which isn't very good for you for the team you know plus also your documentation comes out of sync of your project builds especially if you're using agile and documentation is part of you know your definition of done 
Um, so in order to make sure the documentation supports all of our various open source projects, as I was talking about before, we use Docusaurus, which um, is actually uh, a framework created by Facebook, written in React, specifically for open source projects. Now, all of the um, microsites that we have within Finos use Docusaurus. So ODP uses Docusaurus, um, FDC3 also uses Docusaurus. All the way through, we follow this same type of pattern. Um, now, within um, all of our repositories, so if I go to um, GitHub, um, Open Developer Platform, you will notice that um, there are two folders that relate to the microsites and also the documentation within it. So the website folder here um, is where Docusaurus actually lives. And so if you are a JavaScript developer um, who's used to using um, you know, Yarn and NPM and you know, Webpack for building um, your projects, this will be very familiar with for you within that Node.js um, kind of world. If you are a developer who doesn't want to get involved in front-end websites, then that's absolutely fine as well. Or if you're a project manager or if you're a business analyst um, who wants to work within documentation rather than code, this docs, docs folder um, is where you can also live with your team. So if I drag this uh, tab over to the um, open developer platform microsite, you will notice that there are various different um, uh, markdown files. So if I go to Finos maintainer cheat sheet, you'll notice that the information that's actually within this markdown file is actually the same information that's displayed when you come here. Um, and, it, and to be quite honest, it is, it's, it's exactly the same. And so within the repository, this is a markdown representation using your repository like a CMS, which then gets built using the action that I showed earlier for Docusaurus into your microsite. Now, it just so happens that this um, particular piece of um, markdown has been placed into the Getting Started tab or getting started at um, section um, of the ODP microsite. But if you look through, so if I hit back on here, you'll notice that there is actually a subfolder called development infrastructure. And this actually follows um, the same navigational path or tree or hierarchy um, through here. So code validation um, just happens to be here. And then under code validation, you have all of your various different um, content. So node security, for instance. So hopefully there's a node security section. And so this uh, markdown representation that you have with your code and with your project team then gets built using an action and placed into the microsite. So you get a high fidelity searchable microsite for not only um, advertising your project, but also delivering all of your project um, documentation to the outside world. You know, so people who don't live in GitHub can navigate to you know your microsite in order to to, to see this. Now, as part of the cheat sheet, so if I um, find that, we have provided a link here. So if I close these links so people don't um, get confused, this shows all of our maintainers how to actually engage with creating this type of microsite you know, for your projects. And this type of microsite um, is also part of the project blueprint. So if you use blueprint as a template, you get a very kind of um, first uh, build of a new microsite for your project. And then you can use this documentation in order to configure your project um, and then start using that way of unifying your project documentation with your microsite. Now, Mal, I don't know if I've missed anything or if you would like to cover anything else on that, or if people have got questions, feel free to place them in chat. 
I think you did a really good job. <laughs> Thank you. No, that is... there's nothing to add on my side. Thanks. Brilliant. Okay, so moving on to the third um, row here. Um, this is actually something that is quite new for us. You know, we've been, do been doing it for a few months, but a lot of our projects are just moving in this direction. And that is actually running um, our project meetings. Um, so if your project comes together for a call um, and you need to provide an agenda um, and also provide meeting minutes after that call, we used to create um, our minutes and also our agendas in JIRA, which um, actually led to more context switching. And so what we actually do now is um, run all of our um, meetings using um, GitHub issues. So if I go to GitHub, um, open developer platform again, issues, this afternoon, um, we have an ODP meeting. So, you know, you can see that the Open Developer Platform um, as a, a project is very active within the issues because we're very communicative and we like uh, the community to get involved in our work. But here, you'll notice the, the filter or the label meeting. And if I open that, this afternoon's meeting is actually um, being created um, by Mao, who will be running this afternoon's meeting. Um, and through this particular um, issue um, on GitHub, which I'll put into chat as well, you'll notice that um, we place our agenda here. We've got checkboxes that allows us to tick off when we've actually covered these items. Plus, we've got the various different WebEx information. So very much like this call. You can jump on the WebEx, you can see us, you can engage with us, you can get involved, you know, you can feedback, you can take on tasks. Um, but ultimately, um, you can also, we can also track our attendance on here. So if I say hello and um, give a little wave uh, using the wave emoji, this is now a way that we are encouraging all of the Finos community um, who are getting involved in our project meetings. The number one um, sign up to GitHub um, because in order to be able to place a comment there, you ne need a, a GitHub profile. And so this is me. Um, and then number two, if you've never used GitHub before, this also gives us the opportunity to teach people, you know, how to engage in issues and how to, you know, leave comments, etc. And so after the actual meeting has run, um, we then close this particular issue, um, so that meeting's ended, and that actually triggers um, the GitHub action that I showed you earlier around meeting attendance. Um, and then we can then aggregate who's been on our project calls and make sure that we you know, can engage with the community after the project as well. So Mal, um, Feel free to, you know, add more about, you know, how we're actually using GitHub to run our meetings and how we're using actions to aggregate all of our various different tracking and, you know, all of the various different um, uh, metrics that we're accumulating. And yeah, I mean, yeah, and again, you did a great job here. Um, there's not much to say. Of course, there is more color to the to the feature, we have a way to unindex and reindex data in case of uh, typos. Uh, we identify unknown identities, uh, and the action drops a comment. There is some automation there, but uh, you know the juicy part is what you said. One uh, quick note may be that we track this information because we care a lot about metrics. And because we consider ourselves a data-driven organization, right? So if you can open a tab, James, on metrics.finos.org, uh, that is probably uh, what I would like uh, people to see when we talk about metrics. Um, and this is publicly available, right? Everyone can go on this on this board and play with our data. Part of this data is meeting attendance, as you can see right at the bottom, at the bottom right of the screen. Yeah, meetings attended. So that is actually that num those numbers are fed by 
by the GitHub action that James has shown you. Right, that's awesome. So I don't know if um, whilst I go back, because what I did um, was trigger the action. Um, so Mao actually spoke about you know triggering an action and collecting that data so we can actually present it you know externally to the Finos community. Um, I actually triggered that action by closing this issue. Um, and what that actually did um, was trigger an action within the actions tab of GitHub, um, which was that that meetings um, action that I showed previously. I can show you it again, but you'll notice that all of the various different tasks that are set out in that um, action have been triggered. Um, and the very last task that gets triggered is this indexed label, um, which allows us to um, then know that that meeting has been indexed, which is brilliant. But then if um, for whatever reason, after indexing, so if we need to re-index and then run that action again, we can then um, remove that index and then add it again, and then that will re-trigger that action. And so this is a great interactive way for us to, number one, you know, get people using comments, number two, um, communicate what actions are and how they're triggered and what they do, um, and then number three, keep our community updated um, through our metrics. Um, so Mao or Grizz or somebody on the call, if you would like to share the metrics um, URL, that'd be great. Um, this one's a little bit long. Um, thank you, Aaron, for asking a question. Um, we'll queue that one up and we'll come back to it if that's okay in our Q&A. So within um, the actual uh, documentation that we provided um, the community, we've got a couple of links in here. Um, the second of which is, you know, how we actually uh, technically uh, engage in that piece of functionality that um, we just demonstrated. So how we're using actions, you know, how you actually trigger them, how you index, how you unindex, and then re-index. It's all within uh, the ODP um, documentation under meeting minutes, which you can see here. So Mal's put a lot of work into making sure that, you know, our maintainers know how this actually works, even though we do, you know, help our teams integrate it as well. But the very first um, bullet um, here is actually around meeting procedures. And this is where um, technology um, meets open source foundation and um, governance and, you know, setting out the expectations for maintainers on how our meetings, you know, should be run, you know, because we like to make sure that, um, you know, as people join the foundation and as they start running projects, we provide as much information about how to do that as possible. And so the first link is actually um, into all of our meeting procedure documentation. So people know how to run a meeting. Um, and then the rest of it is, you know, about the technology that we, you know, give to people to make sure that you can run it in the way that, you know, we're setting out here as well. And so we like to cover, you know, both angles in terms of the how to run a meeting and then also provide the tools through ODP on running the meeting. Now, this then brings me to the um, fourth row. Um, so thank you, Aaron. Please keep your questions coming and we'll come back to them. The next one is about um, security um, and how we make sure that, um, you know, we're keeping people and banks and our projects and all of the developers who are contributing to projects safe in an open source environment. So the very first link in here is um, out to white source, um, which is actually um, a, a code scanning and vulnerability um, software that we use within our projects to make sure you know, malicious um, libraries and codes and builds aren't consumed you know, within our builds um, at build time. So Mal, I don't want to do a disservice to explaining white source. Maybe you would like to give us an overview of white source and how it's integrated into our projects. Sure, and I'll uh, and I'll also try to answer Aaron's question as it may be uh, it may be connected. 
uh, to this conversation. So um, wide source does a lot of things, right? Uh, it is a quite comprehensive tool for uh, security and compliance scanning. Um, the way we use uh, wide source, because we also combine other tools, is um, identifying CVs uh, across our uh, across projects transitive dependencies, whether they're direct or indirect. So uh, we want to make sure that the software that is released under the Finos umbrella is uh, safe and secure. And this is a scanning that happens that is enforced at contribution time and ongoing. Uh, especially for, uh, in particular, for uh, projects that want to request the activation badge. Uh, the, the, the requirement will be that they can document that they are CVE free. Um, so again, it, it provides also other features around legal uh, um, and, and license scanning. Um, we we tend we tend to use uh, other other tools uh, and have a more uh, much more you know manual scanning to ensure that there is no uh, no there are no legal issues uh, with the code. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And and to our and to Arthur's question, right? Uh, how did you choose the tool set at high level? What were you optimizing for? Uh, open source versus proprietary security, ease of use, etc. Um, so let me start saying uh, that uh, the tool set uh, at the beginning started reacting to the project's requests, right? So we uh, started onboarding projects in Java. We would, you know, um, provide the tooling uh, or develop the tooling uh, to support uh, that team, that, that initiative. Um, so we, 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 we grew quite strong on... Uh, Java and, and Node at the beginning because those were the languages that uh, were involved in our projects, were used in our projects. Then in the second stage, we saw vendors joining the Open Developer Platform initiative like GitHub, WhiteSource and Red Hat. So they provided us infrastructure and we actually kind of worked with them uh, to adapt this offering. Um, but again, we are, we are constantly evolving. Uh, we definitely have a direction. So the, back to your question, what were you optimizing for? And that is security, what I what we just said about around white source, uh, legal uh, license scanning, uh, intellectual property uh, checks or uh, validation to avoid violations, um, and the quality, right? Uh, where quality is probably, you know, the most generic one. We, I kind of like the, the vision of Sonar Cloud, if you are familiar with it, where you can define quality gates and they have different metrics, and they also provide like some kind of static code scanning uh, to measure quality. Uh, but these are definitely the directions, and uh, and I I hope that the ODP homepage, you know, kind of delivers this message. But that's also the type of feedback we are probably looking for. Um, if if that it comes kind of unclear from our documentation, please let us know because there's probably space for improvement there. Absolutely. Um, that's it, James. Nice, thank you very much. And um, what I want to do is uh, round off, you know, talking about security um, by talking about our responsible disclosure policy. Now I've dropped a link to that um, within Finos chat, um, but basically uh, responsible disclosure is um, how you actually communicate to a team um, that you found a vulnerability within a live project without actually, you know, kind of over alerting the industry to that, you know, vulnerability that's been found. Now, I won't go into too much detail about it um, because, you know, looking at the time, we are actually, you know, covering a lot of detail. Um, but we do have um, various different procedures that we actually uh, communicate and teach our, lead, our maintainers you know, just in case the community does find a vulnerability and needs to communicate that without actually writing a GitHub issue that could actually um, inform bad actors about it. So if you're interested um, about how we handle um, responsible disclosure and security, um, you can find that within the actual Finos wiki. 
that I've put within um, our chat here. And we do cover all of the, the various different scenarios in here, including, you know, how you actually get in contact with help at Finals.org. And we put, you know, you in contact with the team so you can discuss that between you and the team rather than, you know, putting it into a GitHub issue. So finally, um, as a maintainer, you are also um, wanting to grow the success of your project. Um, and we actually do that by uh, mentoring and coaching our maintainers um, on the Finos project lifecycle, um, which um, Mao actually um, mentioned earlier that we have badges um, on a lot of our projects. So if I go to um, GitHub, dot com um, fdc3 for instance you'll notice within the project readme uh, we have various different badges in here that you know relate to the state of the project at that time and one of those badges is um the life cycle badge um, and as you can see um, fdc3 is an active project um, now when a project actually enters the foundation um, as uh, documented um, within uh, our governance, it actually enters the project um, as an incubating project because we recognize that um, not all projects that enter the foundation will have the same level of maturity as one that's been you know, within the foundation for a while. Um, and this allows projects to find their feet. It allows us to give you know, coaching and guidance on how to set up your, you know, backlogs, your Kanban boards, you know, your release cycles, CI/CD, and everything that you need to be successful. Um, and we do have um, life cycle criteria that projects need to actually um, hit in order to um, start progressing um, through the various different life cycle checks checkpoints. So forming projects, which is op optional is pre kind of contribution. So we work with um, a lot of projects before they've been contributed to make sure that they're um, fit and ready and happy to be contributed. When a project has been contributed, you go into incubating where we get you up and running and make sure that you feel confident about, you know, how your project um, is actually being run, both um, in terms of project management and also development and release, et cetera. Then when you um, pass through our activation checklist, you then become an active project, which is um, an active project is very, you know, fully formed and you don't need too much, you know, guidance from the foundation. You're then self-organized and you're fully running, you know, and you're mature, which is great. Um, and then at the end of a project life cycle, we have our archive projects, which, um, are useful projects that still exist, but maybe it's, you know, reached the end of, you know, the development phases that it can go through. And so it remains within the foundation so people can still use it, but it's not actively being contributed to, you know, it's kind of reached peak maturity. And so this is how a project team actually evolves through the Finos project lifecycle. And so not only are we helping um, teams with, you know, maturing in terms of technology, but we're also teaching teams how to, you know, mature their projects in terms of life cycle and maturity and growth as well. Okay, and so looking at the time, um, I think that we've run over by um, a few minutes, but before we go, um, something that I want to announce are the people who have actually won Finos t-shirts. Um, and so looking at um, our Slack here, I'm happy to say that Aaron um, from Temenos, is that correct? Has won a Finos t-shirt, so congratulations. Um, and uh, Jeb from Greenpoint Technologies has also won a Finos t-shirt. And so the team will be in contact with you. Um, now, if we didn't manage to answer all of your questions, feel free to come to the ODP session, which will be starting in maybe a quarter of an hour. Um, let me just quickly um, get the details for you so you can come and join both myself and Mal, who will be um, on there. Oh, Mal, I think I closed it, so I need to find it. 
There we go. Hey, no worries. Don't worry. I'll, uh, so I'll unindex and reindex. <laughs> Absolutely. So if you're interested in asking myself or Mal any more questions about the Open Developer, developer Platform, feel free to come and join us um, soon. Uh, all of the cool details are on this issue that I just posted. And thank you, everybody, for joining us this afternoon. It's been an amazing session. And thank you very much, Aaron, for your questions. Um, and feel free to, to come back and find us. So thank you. And thank you very much, Mal. It's been um, really great doing this with you. Thank you.